Now, variance of a data set measures the spread around uh, the overall spread around the central tendency, which in most cases is going to be the mean. And it's a great measure to understand how far observations are away from the center point. So let's assume that we have a set of numbers, and we've put them in order here, and we have another set uh, that has obviously smaller numbers. Now, we can by eye observe that the first one has a very large dispersion around the, uh, around the center point, which is somewhere around 300, uh, whereas the other one has a, a smaller dispersion around uh, 10 or 11. So how do we calculate the variance? Well, we, we have to calculate the variance by measuring how far each observation is away from its mean. And it might look like the following, where we have each individual x, and we subtract the mean from it. So consider points that are way above the mean, they'll be positive, and points that are below the mean, those will be negative. So the thing is, is that we really want to get rid of these positive and negative numbers, or really the negative numbers, uh, because we want to know how far away something is. So distances are always in positive numbers. So this pr represents a small problem. We fix this problem by squaring the difference, which will remove the negative numbers, and it will also increase the magnitude for items that are further away. So consider a point that's let's say 10 points away from the mean, well, if you square it, it's going to be 100. Whereas if you have one point away from the mean and you square it, it's only going to be 1. So this increases the magnitude to kind of describe it a little bit better. So what we have here is we have a formula where we take each observation, xi, and we subtract the mean, we square it, add them all together, and then we divide by n in general. Uh, we're going to have to fix this a little bit, but that's what's going on, because this will give us the average difference of every point. So in calculating a population variance, we have our formula here, uh, which gives us exactly that. We basically take each observation, we subtract it from the population means, square them, add them all together, and divide by n. Now, let's consider the fact that we know, for example, the human body's temperature is 98.6 as a population average. So again, it's saying mu, so we're going to be using that. And if we're using that, then we're going to be creating a population variance, which is known as sigma squared. Now, for a sample variance, we're going to have to make a slight adjustment. In general, we have the same formula, but we're going to do something a little bit different because we need to do a slight correction. It's more of a uh, statistical piece, so let's just assume that we'll have to do this correction. Uh, but the idea is that if you take a sample, your variance is going to be uh, slightly, uh, it's going to be slightly off from the population variance. And so the way we correct for this is instead of dividing by n, we're going to divide by n minus 1, which will kind of inflate the sample variance. So if we, uh, so the idea here is we're going to take the same basic approach where we have the each observation, we subtract it from the sample mean, which is denoted by x bar, we square it, add them all together, and divide by n minus 1. Again, if we divide it by n, we're closer to the population number, but by taking n minus 1, we're kind of inflating it a little bit as a form of this correction. And again, we denote it by s squared. It's a Latin letter, and therefore it is going to be a sample variance in this case. Now, we don't need to do these really in Excel, even though we have a video that was going to show you how to do it, calculate it by hand in Excel. We do have two functions that will do this automatically, so don't worry about that. Now, the standard deviation is easier to interpret than the variance, and this is because of the squared unit measures. In other words, it's very easy to calculate once you have the variance. We just take our variance and we square, take the square root of it. What this basically does is this gives us the ability to measure around the mean how far it is in a standard way. We don't have these large numbers of 500 or 1,000 or, you know, if you're dealing with income, you could have a variance of, you know, 1.2 million. The idea is the standard variation will reduce this number to something between, let's say, 1 and 3 or 4. So how do we interpret the standard deviation? Well, if we take, uh, you might hear someone say that we have uh, one standard deviation around the mean is plus or minus 2. Well, what that basically means is, is that if our mean is 28.6, then one standard deviation around the mean being plus or minus 2 means that you're going to have uh, a range from 26.6 to 30.6. So how do we, let's calculate this as an example. 
So first, we have our set of data on the right side. And if we're going to calculate a sample variance, we're going to use the var.s. Now, the var.s says, give me the sample variance for a given data set. And if we did var.p, it would give us the population variance of a given data set. Similarly, we'll have the standard deviation of a sample data set, stdev.s, and stdev.p for the population. So in the case on the right, our variance, our sample variance, is going to be 130.47. And our, our stam sample standard deviation is 11.42. Now, had you taken the square root of the result of the variance, which was 130.4733, you would get the exact same result as stdev.s, in this case, 11.42. So let's look a little bit more closely at the interpretation of the standard deviation. If you consider here, we have a chart where we have the normal distribution. What's going to happen is, is that 68% of the data will fall within plus or minus one standard deviation of the mean. So you see this nice blue bar here. Uh, plus or minus one standard deviation along the x-axis says that 68% of the data will fall within this area. And that's important because, again, remember the normal distribution has this bell curve. And it has this special property where a lot of the data wants to be around the mean. That's one of the key aspects of the bell curve. So you can determine that if you calculate your, your standard deviation and you uh, plus or minus one standard deviation, whatever that value is, uh, from the mean, you can then figure that 68% of the data will lie within uh, plus or minus one standard deviation. If it was two, it would be plus or minus two from the mean. And so we also have this rule called the 68-95-99.7 rule, which means that 68% of the data will fall within one standard deviation, plus or minus. 95% of the data will fall within two standard deviations, plus or minus. And 99.7% uh, of the data will fall within plus or minus three standard deviations of the mean. So 99.7 obviously means that most of the data will occur uh, you know, in that center point with very, very small tails on the side. Uh, and that makes sense because that's why we had been saying that the standard deviation is good because if we know the standard deviation, we know that within three standard deviations, we've described most of the data set.